October 18th. It's right at about 6.20 in the morning. 40 degrees. Got a good wind pushing away from this bedding that's behind me. We're in this new set that we set up a couple weeks ago. And, uh, so I think sunrise is 7.54, so a little over an hour before that sun starts to come up. It's 11 o'clock and I uh, haven't seen anything. Seen a, what I think was a buck about 150 yards on that other hillside. And just seen him for a split second as he was cutting through some trees that I have an opening in. Um, so came in this morning, got all set up, didn't bump a single deer, nothing blue. Thought I was good. Pulled my, uh, my camera out to So that's twice today. So doe and two fawns. So anyway, I took my camera out this morning to make a, a little introduction video to uh, to the hunt, a little interview, and of course I had to have the light on because it was dark. And as soon as I did the first take pretty sure it was a buck started blowing right below me. I've sat here ever since. Haven't seen anything until I make this video. And there's like three or four deer right there. All right, I'm about halfway out of here. Just wanted to get out of back back there before I talk again. But uh, guys, if you haven't tried filming a hunt and do it consistently uh, and try to be successful at it, I mean, it's fun, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love the experience. I love sharing the experience, but one of the hardest things is, is trying to share the experience that you actually have. So. Like I seen that buck about a hundred and something yards away through the trees. And by the time I got my camera turned on and tried to zoom in, he was already past that opening. So I didn't get to share that experience. And, you know, I'm sitting there this morning. I do everything right. I get all set up. And if I was just hunting, I probably would have seen or killed a buck this morning. But I pull the camera out, turn the light on and start doing an interview. And probably within 10, 15 yards behind me. And it had to be a buck. I mean, it was deep blows and it sounded like he was tearing the dang on forest down as he was running through there. So, you know, yet again, the, the camera cost me an opportunity. So I sit there until about 
and uh, decided to call it. I have to get to work. I got get, got to get some stuff done so I can have the whole weekend for muzzleloader season here that comes in tomorrow morning here in Kentucky. So got to run to the office. So I'm picking everything up. Hadn't seen anything. So I take my camera arm down, uh, get all my stuff packed up, and I turn my camera on yet again to make a closing video for this hunt. And as soon as I start talking, literally a, a doe starts blowing at me uh, from right, I don't know, 30, 40 yards away, just on the other side of where I have that, that feed station or feed put out. And uh, so yet again, the camera cost me an opportun opportunity. So I got a picture, or I got video of some of them as they were blowing and getting out of there, but there was at least five, if not more, that were basically working their way up that hill. If they weren't bedded there the whole time, I don't know. I never saw them. So either way, long story short is this is not as easy as it looks and i know some people out there make it look phenomenally easy and uh i'm just trying to get good at it but it is very very frustrating uh, but at the same time i love doing it um i love sharing my story I love sharing my hunts and uh i hope you guys enjoy watching them so we're gonna keep getting after it um i gotta get to the office I'm probably not going to get out tonight until late, so it'll probably be five or six before I slip in. I'm going to try to slip into that food plot again tonight, just for a couple hours, and then we'll be right back at it. Uh, Drew's coming in, so Drew's going to hunt with me uh, tomorrow morning for opening morning for muzzleloader, so should be good. Hopefully we'll have plenty of action. Continue to tune in, and as always, wake up and hunt.